Okay, well, it looks like we're recording. Hello, Mark. How are you doing? Welcome I am back. doing one. <laughs> yes, oh, thank I'm sorry. you so much. <laughs> you're, you're welcome. It didn't say recording started, which it normally does. So here we go. Anyway, today, welcome back. Today we have with us a special guest. His name is Mark Entrekin. He is going to talk to us all about the power of unity, the power of caring, all of that stuff that this world needs more of. But before we even get started, Mark, I want you to introduce yourself. Tell us who you are and how you got started caring. <laughs> Tammy, thank you so much. I appreciate it. And it's an honor to be on your podcast. Thank you so much. We had some troubles with scheduling last time, but this is so great to come back and be with you in this process. But again, like you said, Mark and Tricken, I have been in the IT world, information technology, since I was about 18 years old. And it's been all great, been fun. But during that time, life has happened. And the more I got into life and what we see on a day-to-day -day basis, the less interest that I had in building more and more in the IT world. Now, I still coach in IT and push technology. I still build with some of the teams and businesses on how to get things done. It's about breaking things down, writing it down, getting it done, best ROI possible, return on investment. But as I do that, I also look back at my life and what has happened in my life and what I've learned about being born in Southern Mississippi, more of a black community, moving right before my third grade year to Southeastern New Mexico, more of a Hispanic community, going to Texas Tech University, more of a white college, and then being injured in an automobile accident where I had to have nine pints of blood in a little town of Hattiesburg, Mississippi. Well, where does that blood come from? And were, were they all middle-aged, oh, not middle-aged, <laughs> middle-income, you know, smart people that I was receiving this blood from? And, and the answer, of course, is no. You never know who that's coming from. But we also know that there's only four blood types. There's so much to talk about on this, Tammy, that in our life as we grow that we don't think about until we get into those situations and that we are all one. And then I went through a divorce. And the court system was so prejudiced at the time against the male entity but the, it was all now the deadbeat dad because of one person who won the lottery didn't give anything to his family which is about as simple as can be but it went around the judicial system so as a father you had a difficult time being a parent and it was so challenging so in that process and on that growth through life i moved more and more into speaking i'm a distinguished toastmaster through toastmasters international and that ability to share more with people as I learn more from people has opened up so much. And that's why I started the Achieving Unity through the power of caring, helping, and including others personally as well as professionally. Perfect. So the Achieving Unity through the power of care, community, caring. and helping others, is that what it was called? So is that yes. your business? That's your whole business? Oh, no, my company is Reality Focused Dynamics, creating solutions one reality at a time. This is one vertical that I work in, one discipline. I also work, as I mentioned, in business in the Agile, Scrum, Kanban, uh, iterative processing, and I coach people going through divorce and custody issues in our divorce industry. And some of the things, I was talking to an attorney yesterday, and she does some of the same thing because... Our divorce industry has truly destroyed the family in so many ways because we don't need lawyers and a judge is nothing more than another lawyer with five or more years of adversarial experience. We don't need that in our families. We don't need that in our homes. We have a breakup. What we need is coaches. We need more coaches in the process to help people build through that. And that's what I also do. So you're a busy man and you do it I all. I like it. Yeah, that's cool. And you do it all through caring. So, I, I mean, that's that's interesting. And it's funny that you I was like, where is he going with this blood thing? Like, what? I, I didn't I didn't know where you were going with that. But that it's a very I have a whole story thing. on that. If we, if we have time someday, I'd like to go through that. Yeah, it's, absolutely. I call it love circulation and love circulation dot com. It's just the blood that flows through us is our love. That's what keeps our heart beating. But we are all with four blood types, A, B, A, B and O. No matter where you are in the world, around the world, Scandinavia, Russia, China, if you over there and you're in an accident, you're in the hospital, 
you're going to receive blood from the people that are there that donated the blood. Same thing is here in the United States of America. But we are all the same. If you're O positive, you can give to any other positive blood type. If you're O negative, that's a universal donor. You can give that to any other person. There are some situations in some of the negative blood types, but the bottom line is, no matter where we are, anywhere in the world, we are the same. We are one, and we need to think about that as we see each other walking down the street. You may see somebody who has, I don't know, they smoke. Oh, no. They have too many tattoos. Oh, no. Too many earrings. And you have a, some of us, some people, not one of us, but people that would just turn against them right away. But... If they or someone in their family were to go into the hospital and need blood for any reason, that person they didn't like may be the person that donated that blood because we are seriously all one. Wow, that's a big concept, but it's so simple. I mean, it's just absolutely so simple. And it's true. And when you talk about like we were talking right before we got on here, just the concept of caring and the fact that we need to start caring more. Like you said, there's and I was we were talking about doing like a conference on stigma and the, and just the thought and the the biases and the preconceived notions about so many different groups, whether it's, you know, I deal a lot in mental health issues. So whether it's, you know, people that have committed suicide or, or whatever it is, there's so much of this preconceived notions and prejudices that if you could just get in that person's mind for just a second and think, what did they go through to get them there? Like, what could have possibly happened? I actually was at the library the other day, and this gives me goosebumps to just think about it. And I walked by where they were having an Al-Anon meeting in like one of the rooms and a lady, and I was just reading the books like right in the stack there, where I think they still call it the stack. I don't know. Um, that's what they called it when I was in college. But I'm walking by the room and this and this lady and her little girl, her little girl had to have been nine or 10. And she says to her, oh, honey, don't even look in there. That's where all the messed up families go. Exactly. And I'm that's like, the way people rate I, people. Like, and you just mentioned it, Tammy, the divorce, the um, prejudice that we developed from our learnings or our culture, how each of us grew up. And we carry that forward to our children. And that okay. just is not helping us build to be a better, build a better world. Right. So you're right. So your talk is caring is what's talk, tell me your talk title again. I love it. It's the unity of care. No, the unity. Sure, uh, achieving <laughs> unity through the power of caring, helping and including others. Perfect. So your whole talk is just about making this a more compassionate and a more feeling and a more caring world. Absolutely. And there's so much that we can do with it from families, from friends, to our social internet world, to work, to business. It's the same. When you go into a business meeting, you're all in a conference room, or maybe you're on a conference call and you see each other. And too many times it may be something as simple as I joke about. I was born down south, moved out west, but I still have some of that little southern twang in my voice went to texas go. tech i may have a little western twang to my voice and when you're talking to people they may hear that and when they hear that twang they may think oh he's from here he's from west texas he's from mississippi he's like this he's like that which is just not true we have movies that may portray someone that did talk with a southern accent that may be wasn't smart enough, wasn't bright enough, wasn't something, but that no way truly groups everyone into that definition. We all have the ability to learn. We all have the brain to make tomorrow happen for us if we just take it going forward and not take it to a meeting room and see that someone is some race, color, creed, national origin, certain voice type, certain income level, certain anything, but that we are all capable of helping each other in one way or another. And that's such a good point because, you know, like you said, in the, we're living in a world, I, I like to say the best way to describe it is shit happens in all of our lives. We all deal with it in different ways, different, you know, we react differently, but so many of us are carrying that around. And, you know, you go into work and you see someone that's having a bad day 
And immediately people, I watch people's reaction and it's not, you know, well, what's going on with you or how can I help you? It's what's wrong with you. And so we're immediately taking all of these people that are struggling to begin with and we're perpetuating that, you know, because now this person is like, well, I don't know what's wrong with me. Everything's wrong with me. Instead of saying like, hey, you look a little down. What can I do for you? You know, not what's wrong with you, but what's happening to you? Um, what's I happening like to, in your life? Yeah, I like to think that's just a good place to start is I used to do door to door sales and I used to talk to people about building rapport and it was very hard of the people that I was training to do that were like, well, he was really grumpy and he was this and he was that. Well, you don't know what just happened to him on the other side of that door. You know, maybe he needed a friend. Maybe he needed someone to talk to. Maybe he just found out his cat died. I mean, you just don't know. But to just, you know, be in this reactive world. So it kind of goes both ways. You know, people are grumpy. So we're reactive versus we're positive you know it just it just it's an ebb and flow kind of and like you said it goes both ways so too many times you know maybe it's our drive into the office or drive into work it was bumper to bumper somebody pulled in front of you there was some road rage whatever and then you get to work and so you get to work because of something that may have happened to to you me somebody they go into work and they find something wrong immediately with anything in the room anything somebody's wearing anything wrong with the coffee machine not working they take that negativity with them instead of, I think like you said before, it happens. Put it behind you. Don't share that hate with anyone else. Because I tell everybody, hate is nothing more, H-A-T-E, hate is nothing more than having accelerated troubled expectations. So yeah. you're expecting expecting that trouble, that hates bringing that trouble. So when you take it forward, you're just putting that on someone else as well. And that may not be where they are, where they want to be. So instead of taking that hate and troubled expectations with you, then turn it around to what's called help, H-E-L-P, having excellent leadership plans, having excellent leadership plans. Something happens, as you mentioned, let it go lead on with what else can you do to make today better right amen and i think that's all you know you have to really be in that you have to get yourself in that positive mindset you know i've always been in the practice since i 20 years of waking up and before my feet hit the ground five things i'm thankful for five things i'm grateful for something before my feet even hit the ground because it sends me into the day like that so when that person does cut me off in traffic Instead of being like, bah, 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 you know, throwing all these words out, flipping them the bird, all that stuff. No, I'm just like, wow, I'm kind of grateful that one, he didn't hit me. And two, that I have the time to slow down and let him in. Like, I'm not in that big of a hurry. So, right. you know, again, but you don't know why he cut you off. You don't know why he's angry. You don't know why there's road rage. So what are some tips for people that um, because I mean, I know self-awareness is always the first key. But what are some tips for you to get people in that caring mentality? One of the first things that I try to tell people is life is up to us. So let's make it wonderful. That simple. Life is what we make it. So why not make it awesome? We can do that. We say, well, I can't go buy me a Porsche. I can't go buy me an Audi. I can't do this. I can't, I can't go buy me a boat. Maybe not with what we have each and every day is what we have created. We need to get out of those cultures of yesterday. We need to get beyond the learnings that we had from everyone else that we have met, gone to school with, been a child of, been a brother or sister of a sibling, been friends with. Because too many people have taken those negativities, those problems that prejudice with them where they go and that takes the anger forward that takes that negativity forward and one thing that i tell people also tammy is that anger is our anger is actions not gaining effective results a-n-g-e-r anger actions not gaining effective results so if you're not giving effective results where's the value have you ever right. seen anyone angry that you've been, oh, wow, I'm going to be like that person? 
No, <laughs> anger is not something of value. We've got to let it go and think back onto the positive side. And as we do that with anger, all we have to do is become calm. C-A-L-M. Canceling <laughs> anger me. leads motivation. I knew you were going to have one. I'm like, okay, what's your acronym for that? I'm going to have to write down <laughs> all of these acronyms. You're going to oh, have, hello. we're going to have Mark's acronyms. Like, okay. Because I don't think I remembered the first one help. I'm like, okay, I got to go back to that one, but that's awesome. Having excellent but leadership plans. You know, you mentioned that. <laughs> I have a buddy, Dr. Howard Rankin, and he says, Mark, M-A-R-K, Mark's acronym, acronyms resonate knowledge. M-A-R-K. Mark's acronyms resonate knowledge. I love that. But Dr. Howard Rankin, he's a guy well, I talk with and visit with because those it, acronyms do. That's what they're for. They resonate knowledge. Absolutely. And it's funny because I do, I do the same thing. You know, I'm like failing. Failing is, you know, flawlessly ascending into life. Like there's, there's all these things and I, I do them, but I make them up on the fly. So <laughs> I do sometimes too. I'm not but as These organized. are part of my course. Yes. Yeah. I, I assume that. So, I mean, but it's, it's good things to remember because the next time you feel angry and we're all, I'm always telling people, you know, feel your emotions and you're like, okay, I'm angry. And you'll be like, okay, action what is really not mean? gaining effective results. Exactly. Yeah. Anytime you have the anger, that action is not gaining effective results. You get nothing from it. You see, I'm throwing nothing from it. Right. There, where's the value? And then right. I also have a domain out there. Where's the value.com is one of my domains. Oh, wait, do this just... do calm again. I think I cut you off when you were talking about calm. Oh, canceling anger leads motivation. Canceling anger leads motivation. Guys, these are going to all be in the show notes. I think I'm just going to have to have a list of Mark's acronyms so that when you look at the show notes, you can be like, okay, because you'll want to write some of these down and you may be in the car, you may be whatever you're doing. I don't know when you're listening to this, but those are helpful. And those are kind of like, you, put, you know, you put a mantra up there. I mean, if you're struggling with anger, write that down and carry it with you so that when you have those bursts of anger, you read it. Yeah. You know, that's, it's a very, it's a really interesting, useful tool. I absolutely love it actually. Um, Thank you. Yeah. So, so you've got these things and you <clears throat> talk to people about this caring. What, what's your first step? Like besides what you said of just the happiness and choosing, you know, it's a choice. But how do you talk yourself out of these? Like if you first see about, somebody. Mm -hmm. First you have to learn what it is. What is driving you in that process? Because too many times we don't even think about it. Again, it's a culture. We don't need these cultures to lead our life. We instead need to be thinking about ourselves and leading our own life. Why do we get angry? Anger, again, is action is not gaining effective results. Why do we do that? What's our why? And the biggest problem there, Tammy, is that it's just something that we have learned. We've learned it and we repeat it without any value. So we've right. got to think to ourselves, as I asked earlier, who has ever thrown a tantrum, been angry, that you thought was impressive? Right. I can't no, think but, of one. No. But we mimic it. Too many times we mimic someone getting angry because we think, well, they did it. I do. I'm going to do it. You know, Johnny did it. Janie did it. Sammy did it. Susie did it. Doesn't make it right. Right. And and also, I, a lot of the people that I deal with, and I know a lot of the listeners on this podcast specifically, were not modeled good behavior as far as caring and being compassionate and show, you know, compassionate and showing empathy. They just weren't modeled it. You know, they were told to suck up their emotions. So some people don't even know what like getting mad feels like. But it's when you grew up, like when I was sad, nobody ever jumped to my rescue and hugged me and, and said, it's okay. You know, it was just be tough, be, you know, stoic, suck it up, buttercup and move on. So I feel like as a society too, we've been modeled that and we've been taught that's how we deal with our emotions. So it's our expectation for other people. Yes. And I literally think, I mean, which is, you know, you're, when you cried, your parents told you to shut up and suck it up. Not necessarily you, but I'm saying. Yes, it, me too. No, but you're right. Yes. That's the way I was raised. You're right. right. So when you see somebody, it's like you have to do a whole retraining of the brain because where 
like I went through years and years and years of not feeling that I was worthy to have anybody care about me or validate me or love me or give me that hug. So I had to train myself like, well, if I am, once I loved myself and realized I was worthy, then I started projecting that on other people. It was that positive energy of just love and caring in general. But some people don't even understand that. But do you realize that some people don't know that? They hear it, but they say, oh, that's just garbage. People say that all the time. They don't see it, so they can't mimic that. But they do see the anger, and they see the hate, and they see the rage. And rage is nothing more than rampant actions going egotistical. That's what rage is. It's what we see that we mimic, just like um, from our children. What do we want them to do? We talk to them and want them to mimic us. So as we grow older, we carry that with us and we mimic others. So if we don't have people out there that are being caring, helping, and including others, we're not going to either. So it's one step at a time for us to go out there and share and show others it is possible, it is better, and yes, we can do it. Yeah. Absolutely. And I love that that's your mission and your in your your talk. I love that because thank you. So often you you don't you don't get that. And what you know, it's kind of like when you build yourself up or you start believing in yourself, your confidence goes up. And it's the same thing. Like when you start feeding that, I mean, we're all energy and people feed off each other's energy. So to just be that positivity in a room and that caring person or, you know, it's it's contagious. It really is because it's it kind of like so it's like you can't be angry with a smile on your face. Physically impossible. You know you can't you can't do it. Sure. So it's like when you're caring about somebody, they're they're softening. They're letting their guard down. They're now able to reciprocate that. And, and I love going it. back to what you were saying, Tammy, sorry to interrupt you, but as you're talking about the way we grew up, and hey, suck it up, Buttercup. Instead, we can start doing that caring. That power of caring, I'm not talking about caring for someone. I'm not talking about welfare. I'm not talking about right. giving them money or anything like that. I'm talking about caring. As you mentioned earlier, someone comes in, they're not in a good mood. They don't look great. Just enough to say, as you mentioned, how are you doing today? Are you doing okay? How can I help? Because I care. And when more of us care about each other, we're not about doing that much just caring and helping them get through wherever they are mentally in our mental health, that caring will help us all share with others. And then we're all growing together to help each other, make this world a better place and we can do it. Absolutely. And, and I love that you just said, I mean, even as adults, we mimic. So if we see our boss berating the person that's sleeping or tired or, you know, standing in the corner with their head down, that's it's it's human nature. I mean, you you're modeled your behavior until you're modeled better behavior. So if everybody, you know, if you get that one person in a room, it's all of a sudden like light bulbs will go off like, wow, he really reacted positively and he made a friend. And wow, that's cool. And it's it just seems like a snowball effect. But, yeah, you're right. There's there's got to be more of it in the world. Absolutely. And how, how many of us could use another friend? All of us. As long as I don't have to email them. Too many emails. <laughs> Those don't send us too many emails. Okay, good point. <laughs> I want a phone friend. I have a phone a friend. Like, no, I'm just kidding. But um, no, it's it's so true. So, what's your acronym for care? I haven't made one yet, but I'll think one up. Oh my gosh. Care care is about it's about um, care is. What we'll put you on the spot? Correlating huh? attitudes, resulting excellence. I mean, that's what care is all about. Caring attitudes resulting in excellence. Because that's what we need. Because if we talk about resulting in excellence, I didn't share my two prejudice uh, acronyms with you. No, you didn't. Prejudice, P-R-E-J-U-D-S-C-E. Poor, here's what we are today. What we see in prejudice today is poor reactions, reactions, echoing jealousy and undermined delivery of an immature and cruel ego. That's where prejudice is today. Poor reactions echoing jealousy and undermined delivery of an immature and cruel ego. That's prejudice today. 
Where can we take prejudice? Just go ahead. Yeah, we're just going to call you the acronym man. <laughs> well, as you keep saying, Mark's acronym resonate knowledge, M-A-R-K. I absolutely well, love that. When we're, where we're going to, though, well, I have to, again, I have to give that to Dr. Howard Rankin. He's the one that made that one up for me. He's doing, just talking one day. He came up with that one. But that's where prejudice is from. Where we're going to go with prejudice is positive reactions echoing justice and understanding delivered inclusion by creating excellence. P-R-E-J-U-D-I-C-E. Positive reactions echoing justice and understanding delivered inclusion by creating excellence. That's where prejudice needs to be, and that's where we need to see prejudice going in our future. Wow, absolutely. A hundred percent. I love this. I'm going to go home. I'm going to now my next talk is going to have well, three acronyms. That's my goal. I'm going to do it. <laughs> you need to. Absolutely. Start, start small. It's going to be like cat. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I, I've done them for heal and, and thrive and things like that. I have a book actually yeah. that is that I have a thrive method for children on empowering children in the classroom. Oh, great. And huh? it's, I, I came up with TH, you know, it was like teach them, help them. So it was kind of like the same thing. It was a system that teachers could follow and look and be like, oh, yeah, I need to make sure I, you know, reestablish their identity. Like there's, it was just, that was my book was the thrive method. So oh, that's awesome. Um, yeah, so I could do an acronym too. You can. <laughs> That's awesome. So I don't want to keep you too long. I know you've got some great information and everything, but I'm thinking like the listeners. Okay, so you've got these tips as far as just looking, self-awareness, being being more aware and cognizant of people around you and just how they're feeling. And not necessarily, you don't have to feel their emotions, but just caring. What are some other, give me two more little tips of how people can start to be aware that they haven't been. Maybe. One of the simplest ones is the golden rule. Listen to others as you want them to listen to you. Mm -hmm. How many times do we listen? Too many times, as you mentioned earlier, the word expectation. That's another one I need to be, put an acronym together for. What are our expectations? Why do we have those expectations? Instead of expecting something, why aren't we sharing something? There's mm. reasons we just go into things and, well, just like hate, having accelerated troubled expectations. We need to quit expecting things from other people that we haven't prepared for. Yeah. But I want to take it back to what I mentioned earlier. Life is what we make it. So let's make it awesome. We are just as good as the next person. There's no one that is better than us. We are all excellent people, but it's how we put our next step together that we are going to be able to step forward and be able to use that power of caring for others as we want them to care for us yep. and help each other and include each other. That's how we all come together too many times in this world, there's always someone in a fight. I feel or in a war for Israel, Gaza, all over. Somewhere there's somebody in a war. And why is that? We don't need wars to justify something else. It's like finding something wrong with someone to make ourselves feel better. That's an insecurity. Right. So being in a war, let's be in a peace, a joining of ideas to help each other. Religions are a choice. I had to go through all of this in my course. And my course starts on October 8th. Everyone, oh, yeah, I was please go ask out. You. Yep. Where October can I 8th. That? It's a seven week course, one 90 minute session per week. Go out to www.achievingunity.com. www.achievingunity.com. And I'll be putting the course, putting the course together right now. I've got the layout. It's ready to go. I can give it today. And also my speech I can give today. But it's about putting together that process because we all like these acronyms. I can say them all day long. But the bottom line is, how do we take them in and put them into our heart? So we start learning them as we do our culture, because we have got to replace some of yesterday's cultures with today's ability to build a better world for all of us. 
Absolutely. I love the golden rule too. Cause I've, I've always just done that when people are like, well, I don't know. I'm like, just use the golden rule. How mm -hmm. would you want someone to treat you in that situation? Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. It's very simple. If you wouldn't bark at someone and you don't want someone barking at you, don't bark at them, you know, and, and don't yell at someone. If you don't want them yelling at you, it's very simple. Like treat them like you would want them to treat you. And we'd all have some peace. But I'm going to put all of those in the show notes. I'm going to put your your course links, whatever, you know, whatever you want. Um, I feel like you've given us so many golden nuggets. And usually, Mark, Thank when you. I end, I'm always like, hey, give one golden nugget. But I feel like this was a whole lot of golden nuggets. But um, could you have one last one? Like one wrap it up words of advice from Mark? <laughs> well, it's always so, too many times when we see, see other people or we see – New people, we have that fear, and everyone has different acronyms for fear. Well, mine is false evidence about reality, F-E-A-R, false evidence about reality, because in reality, you should have, you must not, I get that word should out of there, we must not have any fears. There is nothing wrong with talking to someone else. There's nothing wrong with working with someone else. It's a false evidence about reality because the reality is they want to be friends too, but they don't know how any more than you don't know how. Let's work together. Let's be reality focused. Another one of my domains, www.realityfocused.com. You can even call me at 303 focused. 303-362-8733. And again, that is 303 focused. Call me. Talk to me. Let's not just hear these things. Let's put each and every one of these quotes, each and every one of these acronyms into action. Absolutely. Wow. Thank you so much for coming. This was so enlightening and thank helpful. You. Tammy, thank yeah. you for your time. It's a pleasure and an honor to be on your show. Let's yeah, continue to work together. Yeah, absolutely. Because I think, you know, just that's what people need to hear. They need to hear and they need to have hope and they need to just take these things and really look at why we are so reactive. And the fact, like you said, half the stuff that we have and half the stressors that we have are made up in our mind anyway. We're catastrophizing stuff that 99.99% .99 of the time is not going to happen. So like right. if it's you're going to make false up, evidence about reality, right? Yep. If you're going to make up a story and I tell that about people that lose whole chunks of their lives, if you're going to make up a story and fill it up anyway. You might as well make it good. Like might your mind's well. going to fill it up. You might as well, you know, you lose a little chunk of something or you have a little bit of dissociation. You don't know what happened. Make it a good story. <laughs> like, Make it good. Yeah, absolutely. I like that. Yeah. Well, thank you so much again for coming on and for everybody out there. You heard it. Well, you heard a thousand acronyms, so I can't give you just any one. But the big picture is if we all start to care about each other, the world is just going to be a better place with more positive energy and just more cohesive, uh, more cohesive unit. And that's really what we need in this life. So, that is so true. And sign up for my course. It'll be coming out the first of September. I think September 8th is when it gets pub published. And it's October only 297. Oh. October 8th is when it starts. Okay. It don't, doesn't go published until September 8th. Okay. Maybe a little earlier. But it's only two ninety seven, and on a fifty dollar discount, two forty seven. You sign up early, but it's seven weeks, ninety minutes per week, going over all of these items and how we can each put them into our daily lives. And I just think about, oh, that's just another acronym. No, that is an action that does gain effective results. Absolutely. Eliminates that anger. Absolutely. Love it. So you heard it, guys. And we will talk to you next week. And until then, just start putting stuff that, some of the stuff into play and see how much better you feel and the people around you feel. Thanks, and you have a blessed week. Thank you.